G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here with the fifth and final part of our Virtual Reality Tower Defense game and this time we're going to be looking at making the spawning system for our enemies so they can actually make levels and waves and try and attack our little thing to protect. What I quickly want to do, I did say I was really, really proud of the spawning system and I want to explain how I've set it up, how it operates and then we'll finally jump into the code. Now this is probably the most complicated code in the entire series and I apologize, I will do my best to slow down and talk every single aspect through, but there are some things that are just gonna be a little bit different and weird. But in saying that, let's have a quick look at how I've set up this sporting system. So firstly, let's have a look at the level over here on the left hand side. So this guy here is a little representation of our level, and our enemies are going to spawn just here. Okay, when our enemy spawns, the first thing that we're going to have to do is tell them where to go, and that's gonna be the first waypoint. So we have to attach them to that waypoint. And because of how our waypoint system works, it should automatically send the enemies in the right direction each and every time. Now, the way I've set it up, and this is on the right-hand side here, I've got a bit of a breakdown of how this all works. Now, at the very, very top, you've got a level. And inside a level, you have a number of steps to perform before the end of that level. So the spawning system will, first of all, wait a certain amount of time. I've just put 15 there as an example, so it might wait 15 seconds to allow the user to set up a couple of uh, towers, be ready for the first wave to very begin, and then after that 15 seconds, the first wave will kick in. Now, within that wave, I'm gonna, can I scroll down here? No, for some reason it's not letting me. Each wave is made up of segments. Now, let me just grab my little eraser here. I'm gonna redo this bit, because it's cut a little bit off the screen since I've changed the resolution. But the way it works is that each wave is broken down into a number of chunks. So each wave has segments, or wave segments, I'm going to call them in the code. And each segment is just essentially like a little portion of the wave at a time. And each segment can have a little pause after it before the next segment comes through. So that might mean that my first segment has starts with a small enemy, S for small enemy. In fact, I might change the color. Let's go to, yeah, nice pink. So we might start with a small enemy, there might be a very tiny wait, and then the next enemy comes out. And then after that we might have a couple of other enemies that spawn alongside him. Okay, so it's like three in a row, and then another tiny pause, and then we might have another three, or something like that. That's not exactly how it works, but you can change that as much as you want. After the first segment is done, there might be like a little uh, couple of second wait. You can actually specify how long you want to wait. And then the second segment will come up after that. Now this might seem very heavy handed, but what we can do then is let's say we have a second type of enemy. Let's say I've got a large one. It's got a bit more health. It's a bit sluggish compared to the small one. So we might start with a couple of smalls and then we might do a small, large, small or something like that. And then we might go large, large. And as you can see, we can customize it as much as we want. And at the end of the second segment, that would be wave number one complete. And then we go on to waiting for the second wave to kick in. So this is the breakdown of how our levels work. And after all these waves here and waited or waits, waited, are complete, we'll hit the end target here and we'll move on to the next level entirely where we can have a whole different map, we can have different uh, things to protect and so forth. So anyway, that's the breakdown of the system and how it operates. So what we're gonna do before we actually set up the scripting for all that to work is we need a point in which they're going to spawn like I indicated at the very beginning. So I'm just gonna quickly create an empty object. Okay, I'm gonna go over here and call this one spawner. That's exactly what he's going to do. And his position is going to be lots of zeros. And we'll put him into place. And like everything else in our game, the Y value is 0 0.5, just so he all of our enemies spawn at that particular point at the correct height. Now, with everything else in the game, I'm gonna use this in multiple levels, so I'm gonna make it a prefab. I'm sure you're probably sick of that now. We don't have to add anything else but a script to this spawner. So I'm gonna quickly jump over to our scripts folder. And we're not gonna start with the spawning script because the spawning script relies on all those steps working. And the first thing I wanna do is show you how we set up the waves, how we actually create a wave in the editor as opposed to in code. So what I wanna do is create a new C Sharp script. Just call it wave, open that up. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a single variable to this guy, and we're gonna make a little modification to this variable so 
we get a nice looking editor box. And I'll get to what I'm talking about in a second when it opens up. Anytime. Yep, let's do that. All right, cool. So the first thing is, let's drop all this because our wave file here, it's not, we didn't create the class wave for um, behaviors. We actually created it just so we can set up in the editor what our wave looks like. So is it small enemy, then a pause, and then a couple of small enemies, and then another pause, and so forth. So what we need is a public string called pattern. Okay, and this pattern variable here is going to contain all of our enemies. Right? And when they appear, how many appear together, things like that. Okay, so we'll quickly save that for a second. We'll jump back to Unity. And what I'm going to do is to use this script, I'm actually going to add a, a sub-object to the spawner. Here I'm going to right-click, create an empty, and I'm going to call it wave bracket 1, like we did with all the walls and stuff. So when I duplicate it, it'll say wave 2, wave 3. It actually doesn't matter what you call them. It only matters about the order that they appear. The top sub-object will be the first wave, the next one will be wave 2, and so forth. So I'm going to drop the wave script on this guy. You'll let me. And you'll see we get a box, there's a pattern, and it's a string, so we can type in words and numbers. We're only going to be using numbers, and I'll get to how they work in a second. But essentially, the first thing I don't like is, first of all, I can only specify one line for a wave. And I actually don't want that. I want multiple lines, because each line that I put inside this pattern box that goes across will be a segment of my wave, okay? So to get it a bigger box with multiple lines, come back to the script and just above it, you put square brackets and in that you put text area. And round brackets, we specify how big this text area is going to be. Three is how many lines deep it's going to go. 10 is how many max lines we can have. So I've said 10 segments is the maximum Per wave. You can increase that if you want to have more segments, but I figured 10 was enough, generally speaking. So if we quickly go back to Unity and let it refresh, you should see this box grows about three times. Like so. And now we can do multiple lines, okay, as much as we want. All right, now it's up to me here to explain how do we actually write the segments. So this is all well and good. There's a pattern for a wave of enemies. How do you indicate what enemies and how often they come and what's the delay between them, things like that. There's a lot of information here and I tried to keep it as simple as possible in the editor because then it's really quick and easy to make waves and levels. Whereas in the script, it takes care of all the heavy lifting and the hard stuff. So what we have to do is we specify enemies by a number. Now, I only have one enemy at the moment, which is my small one. And I'm going to consider him enemy zero. Now, I'm going to get to why he's enemy zero in a bit when we set up the spawning script. Right now, I can't justify it unless I can show you something. But right now, Mr. Small Enemy is zero. If you have a second enemy that you're going to introduce, like a large enemy, that'll be enemy number one. Okay. And the way it's going to work is each segment in my waves... I use those numbers to indicate what enemy I'm going to spawn. So if I want a small enemy, I type zero. And if I want a second small enemy, I put a space and put another zero. And that will indicate that I want a small enemy followed by another small enemy in that segment of the wave. So this little one chunk of the wave will have two small enemies appearing one after the other. Now just bear in mind, this little gap here, we interpret that as a, a half a second wait, so the enemies don't overlap too much. Okay, so we spawn one enemy, wait a half, so we spawn this guy, sorry, wait a half a second, and then spawn the second one. Okay, that's not to spread the wave out, it's just so the enemies don't overlap on top of each other, that's all. Now, there will always be another number at the end of every single line, and that indicates how long we wait at the end of a segment. Okay, so if I put a one at the end of this, that's not indicating that I want a large enemy, that is indicating I want to wait one second after these two guys have spawned, okay? If I wanted a large enemy at the end of this segment, and I wanna wait one second as well, I put an extra one. The last number on the end of your segments on each line indicates how long you wait, always. We always interpret the last number as the wait time, okay? So I'm gonna add the next line. I just realized I got three lines there. So if I want three small enemies, I put three zeros and then maybe a one again and then another three and a one, okay? 
I might actually begin this wave with just a single small enemy. So you can see here, this wave is made up of four wave segments. This one's gonna have a single small enemy, two small enemies, three small enemies, three small enemies. And after each segment, there'll be a one second wait to make sure that they don't just all flood in all at the exact same time. And every enemy has a little delay between each spawns, just so they don't overlap. So that is how you create your waves, okay? It's really simple. I tried to make it as simple as possible, I suppose. And if I wanted to make a second wave, just duplicate that one and then edit the second waves pattern. So if you want to start with two small enemies, three small enemies, and you can start being a little bit rougher, you can actually put 0 0.4, actually I might just stick with one. And you can start getting a little bit harder as the waves progress. And it'd be a lot more interesting if you have different types of enemies, of course. And you simply have to say, well, if I want a large enemy to spawn here, just put a one there. Indicate the second type of enemy that you want to spawn. And let's say you have three types of enemies, you spawn the third type by putting a two. Okay, and again, I'll explain how these numbers work for the enemies when we get to the spawning script and we do a little bit more work on that. But this is how you set up your spawner, you set up your waves and you set up the patterns within your waves. Okay, now we have a little bit of work to do on the wave script before we get to the spawner because what I wanna do is I wanna set up a system whereby each wave can be broken down into these patterns and the spawner can simply say, hey, Mr. Wave, what's your pattern? And it will give it every single segment, all the enemies and all the wait times for it. So the, the spawner doesn't have to do all that heavy lifting of interpreting what each one of these lines means. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly save my level. We're gonna jump back to the script and we're gonna add a little bit to this script. First of you, at the, first of you, first of you, at the top, I'm gonna to make a public class wave segment. Now, I'm not gonna put anything after it. Usually, you're probably used to seeing this. I don't want more behavior on this guy. But a wave segment is made up of your spawns, so all the numbers at the very beginning of the line, and then the wait time at the very end. So I need a public list of integers, because they're my numbers, and I'm gonna call it spawns. We'll make that equal a new list of int, just so the program doesn't crash when I try to use spawns for the first time. And the second thing we need is a wait time. So each segment is made up of spawns and the wait at the end of the line. So as you can see, that represents the spawns and the wait time. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm not using this guide, this is just used for data storage at the moment, and now we have to set up a function inside our wave class here, which will take our pattern cut it up into different lines, because we might have, well, each line represents a one segment, so I need multiple segments in a wave, and then inside each segment, we need to read every single number for the spawns, and then the last number goes into the wait. There's actually a fair bit of work that goes into this, and I apologize. This isn't the complicated part, by the way, if that doesn't, if that well, fills you with confidence. So what I'm gonna do is make a function called public, and I need to return a set of wave segments. So what I'm gonna do is go wave segment, like that, but square brackets at the end to indicate that more than one wave segment is going to be returned. And I'm gonna call this function pattern to wave segments. So the idea is we take the pattern and we break it down into multiple wave segments and then return that to our spawning system so it can take control. Okay, the first thing we need to do is cut up the lines in the pattern. Because if we've got multiple lines, that means we have multiple segments. So I'm gonna split them all apart. So I type string with square brackets, lines equals pattern dot split. And in the brackets, I put an apostrophe backward slash n like that. And what this is doing is it's taking that pattern, the box, and it's cutting it into new lines. So a, a backslash n is a new line. So every time you press enter, you're actually typing this little character here. What it's gonna do is it's gonna break apart every single line and put it inside here. So if we have five lines, there'll be five lines inside this variable for us. So now it's our job to go through each of those lines and pick out the spawns and the wait time at the end of the spawns. By the way, ignore this error. We're not done, so it still gives us errors. So I need to, first of all, create a list that I'm gonna return at the end of this. So let's create a list which will be returned at the end. And I go list wave segment. I'm just going to call it segments equals a new list. Again, if I don't put this, 
my program will crash the first time I use segments. Okay, the next step here is to loop through each line from the pattern. Okay, so for each string line in lines. So we're going to loop through, if we have five lines, this for loop is going to be performed five times automatically for us. And each time it loops, we'll have the line that we're up to inside this variable. So that means first time we execute that for loop, we'll have 0, 1. Second time we execute it, we'll have 0, 0, 1. Then triple zero one and triple zero one to finish with. So there's going to be four lines. I should actually use the real world example, shouldn't I? So what we're going to do, let's create a new wave segment. So create a new wave segment. Wave segment equal, oh sorry, segment equals new wave segment. So I can start using it. Okay, and now what we have to do is every single spawn is separated by a space. So we're going to do this thing again on the line to get the individual numbers out of it, okay? So what we do is go uh, cut up the line into spawns and time. Because remembering the last number is always the wait time at the end of a segment. So string square brackets, I'm just gonna call it spawns, even though there's a wait time at the end, equals line dot split brackets apostrophe space. And that will split up our line by space and put it into spawns. So that means each number is now put into the spawns. So the first one will be a zero and then a one inside of this guy here. All right. Now what we have to do is go through the spawns, add every single number into the, um, into the wave segment, okay? But ignore the very last number. So I'm gonna loop through the spawn numbers, ignoring the wait time. Because the wait time's at the end. So what I do is I do a for another different type of for loop because I need the numbers. Var i equals zero. I never use var. Why am I putting var there? Int. Okay, i is less than spawns dot length minus one. That minus one ignores the last one for us. I plus plus and brackets. Okay, and now we add that spawn number we're up to into our segment. Okay. So segment dot spawns dot add. Okay, so that's how we add a spawn to our the current segment we're up to. Okay, and this is going to be really annoying. I don't like this. We have to, because a, a pattern is a string, we need to convert that to a number, then put it into our spawns. So int dot pass will convert a string into a number for us. Spawns i. I prefer spaces, thank you very much. So what you can see here, this is the spawns that we cut up from the line. This converts it to a number and then adds it into our segment. Okay. The last thing we have to do, once we've finished this loop, we have to add the very last spawn number as the wait time. Add the last number as the wait time. So it very much looks like this, but we go segment.wait equals int.pass then spawns and we need the last spawn number now i don't know how many spawn numbers there actually was so i have to write spawns dot length minus one and that will get us the last spawn number by doing this okay once we've set up the spawns and the wait time we have to add this whole segment that we've just captured into the overall segments that we're going to return so now add the segment to the wave, okay? Because you need to remember, we're actually just doing a little part of the wave at the moment. So segments dot add segment, like so. All right, once this loop is going to execute here, so you can see that's the top of my for each loop, or the bottom, sorry. Once this is executed four times, that'll be finished. And what I need to do after it is return segments dot to array, okay? We are done, Whoop. return the waves segments. All right, a lot of work that's gone into that. And as I said, I'm trying to set up something that's easy to use in the editor, but not necessarily easy to use in code, all right? But just bear in mind, like we break it up by new lines, we break it up by spaces, add in the spawns, add in the wait time, add the segments to our overall set of segments for the wave, 
and then return every single segment that makes up the wave. And that's, I know it's really difficult probably to read, but that's the essence of what we're trying to do here, okay? But that's actually the wave script complete for the moment. And now we have to work on the spawning script, which is a lot more difficult. So let's start this step by actually creating the spawner script. So going to scripts, right clicking, create C sharp, because we haven't done this enough, spawner. Okay, and with anything else, I'm gonna drag that straight onto my object. And because it's a prefab, yes, what? Cannot add script because spawner, spawner's right there. Okay. Oh, good job, Unity. Let's try this again. There we go, finally. So with anything that's a prefab, make sure you hit the apply button after you make major changes or even minor changes for that matter. And this guy's got a fair few jobs to do. So he's got to, first of all, collect all the waves inside himself. He's then got to read through the data of those waves. He's got to spawn the enemies from those waves. He's also going to know what enemies he's spawning. And finally, he has to produce the wave counter that you see at the top here. So I like to do things step by step. And the most important thing to me is getting the waves collected and then getting them working. So we'll focus on that. Then we'll get the wait times and then we'll get the counter working. All right, one little thing at a time. So I'm going to double click on this guy. Hopefully it opens up properly. Yep. Let's go yes. Let it reload. Yes, as always. It's this one that it whinged about. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this guy, first of all, with everything else, I'm going to change this to awake. We're going to get rid of void updates because I don't want it. And I'm going to get rid of the little comments because I don't like them. Okay. What we need initially, so if we want to know what enemies these waves are potentially are going to have, we have to have a public game object at the top here. Now, there is more than one potential enemy for my waves, so I need to put square brackets on the end of it to denote more than one, okay? Then I'm just going to call it enemies, okay? Put some spaces around it. If I quickly go back to Unity, I'm going to show you what we have to do to set up the spawner with our enemies. I'm going to click on him. Expand the enemies just there when you see it, and there's your size value. So if you have three enemies for your level, type three and hit enter, and then we specify what those three enemies are. Okay, I only have one enemy, unfortunately, so I'll put one, and we'll leave it like this for the moment. I'll go to my prefabs folder with this still open, and I'll click and drag the small enemy into that box. Now, this is the point where I can finally explain what those numbers in our pattern box meant. So I'll hit apply, and leave that there. This zero refers to the element number of our enemies, okay? So because enemy zero is a small enemy, when I type zero, it's going to produce a small enemy. If I have a large enemy and it's in element one, then I'll put a one in here to denote that I want a large enemy to be spawned. And that's how the numbers work, okay? Is that it uses the element number in the pattern. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So basically, if you want two small enemies and then two large enemies and then maybe you got an arch uh, third type of enemy and you want two of those you'd put zero zero one one two two to denote the different types of enemies in your patterns okay so the spawner is the guy that knows what enemies it's spawning and the waves just tell the spawner what order to spawn them and when to pause basically that's the way to put it together so in our script the way we need to break it down so let us start with uh, we have to collect the waves. So let's create two variables here. They're not public because we don't want them in the editor. I need a list of wave, and I'm going to call it waves, as you can see. So this is all the waves that are going to be uh, collected at the very beginning. And we need to know what wave we're currently up to. So I put an int for integer, current wave equals, and I'll start at minus one. Okay, Because we don't have a wave to begin with, we start at minus one because when we hit wave zero, That'll be the first wave that we kick in. So wave minus one doesn't exist. Wave zero actually is the first wave. Wave one will be the second wave and so forth. Very much like how the enemy elements start at zero and then go up from there. Okay, so in awake, what we have to do is collect all those waves. So we're going to grab all these child objects and we're going to grab the information about the waves or the wave script, basically. So how do I do that? Well, let's make a new function down here called get waves. And in void awake, use it straight away. So when we awake, we get the waves. So 
First step. Oh, I forgot one little thing up here. I've done it twice in the video now. I should have remembered to do it a third time. Make sure I put the new list on the end of this. Otherwise, I'll get errors when I start using waves. Okay. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a little function built into Unity called getChild. Okay. And essentially, we're just going to grab every single child object of our spawner object. So, that means if I have 10 child objects in the spawner, they're all considered waves. And they all, I'm assuming they've all got the wave script on it. So what we do is we need a little integer called child. I'm going to make it start at zero because again, everything starts at zero. And we're going to loop through each uh, child object in the spawner. Very long comment there. So while child, so our number child, is less than transform dot child count. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Then we're going to grab, so get the wave script and move to the next child. And the way we grab the script is we're going to put it inside this list up here. So waves.add and we go transform.getChild like that. In brackets child because that's our number. Dot get component to grab the script and we do wave. Round brackets on the end and a semicolon at the end. Why are these back? Go away. Okay, I know that looks pretty complicated, but that is us accessing the child object of our spawner. And this is us grabbing the script out of it and we're putting it inside a list so we can access that list as we go through our different waves. After we've grabbed the wave script, we increase child by one. So it moves to the next child in the list. That's it. That's all this function does. It goes through and it grabs every single script that we have on our spawner object. Okay, the next thing is the big thing. We need to loop through the different waves that are in our level. So we want to start obviously on wave one, but then we want to move on to wave two when we're finished with the first one, and then wave three and wave four, etc. So what I'm going to do is introduce this concept, and I'm going to use it a lot, and it's called an I enumerator. Okay, and it's going to be called wave loop. Whoa, go back up there. All right. Now this I enumerator is used because wave loop is actually going to have little pauses in it. Okay. So we're going to pause at the start of the game. So there's time for the player to set up. We're going to pause at the end of each wave. Okay. And we're also going to pause while the wave is actually underway. So there's lots of different functionality going on here. But before I actually code this guy, I want to go back up to Void Awake and type to start up an I enumerator. We type start coroutine. And then we put wave loop brackets. Whoop, get back up there. Like that. So what this start code is generally used to execute a second line of code at the same time as void awake. But the way I'm using it is I am starting up my loop and this guy is going to take control of creating each wave and spawning every single enemy, basically. He's got a very, very big job. And okay, we're going to break it down though. Ignore that error, by the way. So the first thing I really want to do is we want to pause before we start, if I can spell, uh, for setup. Okay, so the very first pause at the beginning of the level is essentially what I'm getting at here. Now, how do I know how long to pause for? I can put a number in here, but it's probably better off if we leave it up to the level editor to tell us how long we want to wait. So at the very top of the script, I'm going to put in two wait times up here, public float initial wait time and let's make that equal just for testing purposes five but i'd probably use something close to like 15 or 20 in essence and another wait time is going to be wave wait time and i'll make that five seconds as well so that means that there's going to be five seconds at the beginning of the level that you can use to set up your towers and get going and then in between each wave we're going to have another five seconds that we can wait between those to either get ready and you know, buy more towers. So down here, the way we perform waits, and this is really ugly, but it's the same line of code every single time. It's really easy. If I want to wait the five seconds, I type in yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And in brackets, you put how long you want to wait. So we've got our initial wait time, just like that. So this literally pauses my script for that amount of time, okay? And that's pretty much all we have to do. So the second thing, the wave loop has to go through every single loop in our level. So let's actually do that. So we go loop through each wave. 
So while current wave, remember we made that at the top and made it equal minus one, is less than waves dot count, we do some code. So this is, if we've got two, two waves, this loop will execute two times. The first thing I like to do is increase the value of wave. So current wave plus plus. So increase the wave counter, like so. Then what we have to do is quickly double check that we still have waves left to give, okay? If I only have two waves, their numbers are gonna be zero and one. If we get to the number two here, that means we've run out of waves and we should move on to the next level. So I'm gonna put a quick if statement asking do we have waves left. So if current wave is less than waves dot count, I know that's the exact, oh actually I don't need this anymore. <gasps> Ooh, I've negated this code, sorry. I'm looking at my original script on the other screen and I'm realizing that with the while loop, I don't need to ask that question anymore, okay? I've already fixed it with the while loop. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the next function which starts up the first wave, okay? One wave at a time. And the way that we do it, I'm gonna first of all create the function down here. Every function I'll create now is gonna be an I enumerator, I'm sorry. And it's gonna be called start next wave, like so. And here to here, start up the wave. I could write start coroutine start next wave, like that. But the biggest problem with this line of code is, as I said, start coroutine allows you to execute two things at a time. That means it's going to execute my code down here, but then continue up here with the while loop and then actually start the next wave straight away so I'll have multiple waves going at the exact same time. I don't want that. I want it to start up the wave, but wait until finished. And the way we specify to wait until we're finished is by using this yield return again. So right here I put yield return. And that will make sure that we don't continue executing our code until this function is finished. It's really important that it does finish first. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And now we've got the chance in this function, our start next wave, to go through all of our segments and spawn all our guys. So start spawning our wave segments. So what we're gonna do, and I know this is really confusing, is I'm now gonna go through each segment one at a time and spawn them individually. And I'm also gonna have a little pause between each spawn and a pause at the end of each segment, okay? So we've actually got three pauses that we need to do here. It's really, really weird. But essentially, I wanna go through all the segments first. So I'm gonna do a for each. We've got what, for each wave segment, we're gonna call it segment inside waves, current wave, and I need to put our little function pattern to wave segments. Ugly as heck, I know. But what I'm doing here is I'm using that pattern to wave segments that we spent so long earlier on writing, okay, from the current wave, and I'm pulling out one segment at a time, so one line at a time, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have another function that takes care of spawning, okay? We'll do that in a sec, and then we have another bit in here that waits at the end of the segment. So two things, spawn, our enemies, come up here, wait at the end of the segment, okay? So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna do another yield return. Now I haven't written the function yet, but I'm gonna assume we're gonna write it anyway. Start coroutine, and we're gonna call the function spawn uh, enemies, and in brackets, segment dot spawns, okay? Semicolon on the end. It's gonna whinge at us because it doesn't know what spawn enemies is yet, but we're gonna make the code down here in a second. I just wanna finish this off. Yield return, uh, you wait for seconds, because I'm just waiting a set amount of time, and it's segment.wait. So this is us using the spawns, this is us using the wait time. So we've used up all the data in each line so far. Now, if we get outside this loop here, we've actually finished the wave and then we have a wait between waves so wait between waves so another yield return new wait for seconds and it's going to be wait a oh, wave wait time okay so you can see those three things that i talked about in play here so we go through every line that's in our pattern we spawn the the enemies from that uh, from that segment 
and then we wait, and then we'll go back up and get the next line, spawn that one, wait, and then we'll f when we run out of lines, we then just wait until we then go into the next wave of code. Okay, so let us do the spawn enemies now. Okay, so come down a couple of lines. I am numerator, because I'm going to use the wait time again. Spawn enemies, in brackets, it's a list int enemies, like so, and hopefully that error goes away. This one will go away soon when I use a yield return. What we have to do is we have to loop through each enemy inside our segment. So in other words, we're now down to the smallest of parts. We're going to loop through each individual little number, and we're going to spawn them one by one. Okay. So loop through the enemy to spawn. So once again, a for each int whoop, integer, uh, let's call it enemy, in enemies, like so. So we're looping through all the enemies inside our segment, and we're going to create one at a time. So create the enemy and allocate, and this is a thing we haven't done yet, their first waypoint because if an enemy doesn't have a waypoint it's going to create errors in our script so let's just create the enemy first so game object enemy equals instantiate we've done it a thousand times before and what do we want to create we want to create the enemies that's our collection that we did sorry to jump back and forth that's the collection here I put square brackets after it and the index is literally enemy okay that's the number that comes from our pattern and then we specify, scroll across, where to spawn is the transform position. It's just on top of the spawner. And quaternion.identity again, because I don't want to rotate them. Now, here's a bit of a problem. I'll call this one new enemy. Why are you whinging about instantiate? T, what's... Cannot use int parameter of t. What have I stuffed up? Oh, I'm being silly here. I'm using the same name up here as down here. So maybe what I should do is call this enemy refabs. Okay, and I'm going to make sure I click rename. Down here, enemy refabs. I just realized a is that all I have to do? Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so up the top, we have to change that to enemy prefabs, and down the bottom here, that should say enemy prefabs because that's our actual objects we're trying to spawn. And in the editor, let's just make sure this doesn't break. It should say enemy prefabs. Or not? What? Let me just try that again. Remove scripts spawner. Why is it still called enemies? Uh, oh, because I've got an error and it's not updating. Okay. I need to fix my error first. So let's just finish this code and then we'll come back and fix that error. Okay. So we've created the new enemy. Sorry about that, guys. I want to then give him the first waypoint that he's going to travel to. So new enemy, we have to access the enemy script. So get component enemy dot next waypoint, or did I say current waypoint, I call it, yeah. Now, how do we know what waypoint to go to first? Well, what we're going to do is go to the top of this script, sorry, and just here, put public transform first waypoint. And that's going to specify where they have to travel to when they first get spawned. So down the bottom again, first waypoint, like so. Then we're going to have a little pause between each enemy, like I said, so they don't bunch up. Wait for the next enemy so to not bunch up. Yield, return, you wait for seconds. There it is. And I do a half a second, but you could probably try a lower number if you think that they're too far apart. Okay, that error is gone. So now when I go back to Unity, I should hopefully be able to set up uh, enemy prefabs if it's not broken yet. Come on. There's our initial wait times. Enemy prefabs, I've got to fix that. 
So one of the enemy prefabs, small enemy in that box. First waypoint, let's go to our waypoint, let's grab the first one, pop it in there, save, fly, and what I'm gonna do is delete this enemy and this tower. I don't want them anymore. And if all goes well, if I haven't stuffed up my code, most of it should be working. Now I think, have I added everything that we need so far? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we've only got one more job to do. But let's have a look. Let's see if the spawner works. I don't care about towers and buying towers and stuff at the moment. I just want to see enemies appear after five seconds. And follow the way path. There they are. And you can watch, it's going to follow the pattern. There it is. All right, sweet. Once I didn't stuff that bit up. Okay, so what we have to do, the final thing we have to update is this wave counter here. It needs to say wave something out of something, not zero out of zero all the time. So what I'm going to do, we need to use the UI again. So right at the top, using unityengine.ui, the first thing we have to do. Coming down to about here, public text, um, what we call it, wave text, just like we did with the money text. And then if we go down to the get waves, this is where we increase the wave counter here. So I think it's a good idea at the next line to update the wave text. So wave text dot text equals wave. And then we need how many waves have passed so far, which believe it or not, current wave starts at minus one. So that means when we start our first wave, it'll be zero. We actually need to increase that by one when we put it on the screen. So to do that, I put brackets, current wave, plus one. Now that won't actually increase it, but it just displays one value ahead of what current wave is. Then I want a slash like that. And then we need the total number of wave, which is waves.count, like so. So that should display wave one out of two or something like that when the first wave starts up. Okay, so let's quickly go to Unity and make sure that's the case when a wave starts, that that says wave one out of two. To start with, it'll say wave zero out of zero. We can fix that later on. Let's just see. Oh, I broke, oh, idiot. I didn't actually specify what the text was, so I need to open up my purchase space, drag waves inside that box. Try again. Sorry guys, I ignored the error down the bottom. Make sure that changes. Oh, there we go, beautiful. Okay, so the very last thing that I wanna introduce, and I'm not gonna use it, but we want the ability to load the next level if we finish. So if we've run out of waves and all the enemies have died, then we move on to the next level. Okay, I'm not gonna do a big grand, uh, congratulations, click this button to go to the next level. We're literally just gonna chuck them into the next level. So what I'm going to do is first of all, if we want to load different scenes or levels, if you want to call them that in Unity, we have to go at the top and add another using. So using Unity Engine dot scene management. Okay, and this is the guy that holds all the code for loading different scenes within it. There was an old version of doing it that was a little bit easier, but this one has a lot more power. And it's just what you do with the new Unity. I think it's Unity 5.2 that introduced this system. I could be wrong, but that was a guess. So what we're gonna do, if we scroll down, this wave loop here, right? If we, for some reason, get out of this, we've actually run out of waves at this point, but we don't know if they've killed all the enemies. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have another while loop, because that's always fun. And we're gonna check how many enemies we have left over. So how do we do just that? Well, if I click on my enemy, you notice that every enemy, if you haven't done this, make sure you do it, they're tagged as an enemy so that turrets can shoot them. But we can also use that tag to see how many are alive in the world. Okay, so what I do there in this while loop, I'll go while game objects, the capital G one, dot find objects with an S with tag. In brackets, I put enemy, because that's the tag. Then I put dot, is it count or length? It's greater than zero, okay? While it's greater than zero, we'll yield Return new wait for seconds, 0 0.5. We'll give them half a second each time. How's that sound? Or a bit more than that, one second each time. So what'll happen is we check if there's any enemies left in the level. If there is, we wait one second. Okay, once all the enemies have run out, that means we'll get to this line of code here.
and we can load the next level. So to load the next level, you type seed manager dot load seed. If you can spell, oh, come on. There we go. And in brackets, you put the name of the level. So what I'm going to do, because I don't, we want to make it generic enough that this spawn system can be used throughout heaps and heaps of levels. I'm going to go to the top again. Under the wave text, a public string next level equals level hash, or like level number. And then what I do is I use this variable in our load scene. Okay, so all of that, by the way, was in wave loop. Hopefully you caught that. So that actually brings us to the end of the tutorial. I'm not going to demonstrate this because it requires me playing through the game for the next couple of minutes. So I'm not going to do that. But the way you specify the next level is when you create another scene in your game, you simply type in the name where it appears. Come on. There it is. You type the name of the level. Name in the bottom there. And that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. I hope you've learned something. I hope it wasn't too confusing as well. This was a bit of a challenge for me because I've never created a virtual reality project that we have the limitations of the Google Cardboard. But I would thank you if you stuck it out this long and you've done incredibly well. Expand upon your games. Change the theme. Maybe move it around a bit. Make tall buildings. Make explosive ones. Do different towers. Do different enemies. Lots of different stuff. Maybe even have multiple things you have to protect. Okay? But otherwise, I would like to say thank you for watching the series, and I'll see you next time in my next series.